I'm surrounded by some broccoli with tight florets and even color and no yellow discoloration like this has. Tomorrow I'm going to blanch a bunch of broccoli and then I'm going to store it in the refrigerator to use in my meals all week. Broccoli is a cruciferous vegetable that falls in the dark green vegetable group on the USDA MyPlate. Since it's recommended that we eat about one and a half to two cups of dark green vegetables each week, it's good to know many ways to fix broccoli. Broccoli is rich in nutrients including carotenoids. Carotenoids supply vitamin A, but they also act as phytonutrients that reduce risk of chronic disease. It has vitamin C, E, and K, folate, minerals, and dietary fiber. To prepare broccoli for blanching, trim the very bottom of the stem because it might be tough. Then slice the stem. Stems are good for eating, so don't waste them. Divide the florets into bite-sized pieces like this. My daughter Maggie did a broccoli blanching science experiment in middle school, so I can confidently say that this is the best way to blanch it. Bring water to boil in a medium-sized pot like we have over here on the stove. Prepare an ice bath. Add salt to the boiling water because salting the water for boiling or blanching vegetables speeds up cooking and minimizes nutrient loss. I'm adding the salt. I'm adding the broccoli. This is about four cups of broccoli. You'll notice that the pot doesn't have a lid on it. And there's a good reason for that. We'll be talking later about what happens when you overcook broccoli. There's some sulfur containing compounds that are produced. If you put a lid on this broccoli, those sulfur containing compounds are trapped in there. It's much better to let it just uh, dissipate into the air while you're cooking it. It's been three minutes now and our broccoli is done. I'm gonna grab my pot holder. take the broccoli over to the sink to drain it in the colander. After draining it in the colander, I'm going to put it in the ice bath. Notice the bright green color, uh, that's the chlorophyll. This quick blanch is a good way to avoid some of the problems that can occur when you cook broccoli. Overcooking, as I said, can cause the release of sulfur-containing compounds that, while very good for you, have an unappetizing odor. The attractive bright green color that, you're, that is revealed when you blanch broccoli can also change to an olive green pigment about the color of my shirt, called pheophyton, if you overcook the broccoli. That same color change can occur if you add an acidic ingredient, so don't overcook broccoli, and if you're going to put a squeeze of lemon or add some salad dressing to your broccoli, do it right before you serve it. If you want to eat the broccoli when it's warm, you can reheat it. Some ways to reheat it include roasting it or sauteing it, or stir fry it in a little bit of sesame oil. It's totally yummy, as my daughter would say. Take the blanched broccoli florets and place them in a muffin tin on top of a small amount of corn muffin batter, then top with more batter and bake them and make our upstanding broccoli corn muffins. Another example of this broccoli and corn companionship is our harvest of the month broccoli corn casserole. Okay. What I like to do is put some broccoli into a storage container and store it in my refrigerator and then it's ready for anything I want to do. Last night I tossed blanched florets into my potato salad. Last week I tossed some into some pasta and it's delicious to add to a quiche with a little garlic to take it to the next level. At breakfast, add florets to scrambled eggs. There's so many ways to add this great vegetable to meals. This is why I recommend that you blanch a bunch of broccoli next chance you get.